Halloween Ends has dropped in theaters and I had a lot more to say about it than I was able to do in a spoiler-free review. So let's get started talking spoilers. Hi, my name is Sean and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. What did you think about Halloween Ends? This is a spoiler review. Feel free to spoil away down below in the comment section. No need for a spoiler warning. And if you haven't watched it yet, don't watch this video. Go watch the movie, then come in and join the discussion. And I am so very curious how general audiences are going to respond to this movie and in particular Halloween fans because I knew no I was sitting there in the theater not intending to do a spoiler review watching the movie being like man I have so much I want to say about this movie <laughs> I have so many very strong opinions about the direction that they took this film and that's where I realized I, I just have to do a spoiler review there's just too much to talk about and when the movie ended I sat there and I talked for the entire credits with the guy that I went to go see the movie with and we walked outside and we kept talking. I ran into another friend and I talked to him for another 10, 15 minutes. All of us had a lot to say about this movie and where they took things. And so let's dive into it. And to give just my general impressions on the film, if you didn't see my spoiler free review, I, I did not like the film. I didn't really like it at all. Um, the direction they took things just seemed like they were spinning their wheels trying to des desperately come up with a plot to pad out a movie that didn't need to exist. That it felt like the last 15 minutes of this film should have been the end of Halloween Kills. And if you take Halloween Kills and you, you're not trying to use that movie to set up a sequel, all of a sudden you don't need to make the people as stupid all of a sudden, you don't need to make Michael Myers indestructible. You just tell that story and Michael escapes from the fire. He's injured. He's in bad shape. And therefore, he's like a wounded animal. He is just viciously, relentlessly out to kill anyone and anything as fast and as quick as he can while he himself is probably dying. Have the lynch mob form like did happen in the film and they're trying to get him and lynch mobs, as they often do, make mistakes. Pe the wrong people die because of it. Then you get to the end of the movie and instead of trying to find an excuse for Michael to escape, the lynch mob and Laurie Strode are able to catch him throw him into the wood chipper, throw him into the car crusher, whatever, rip him to shreds. Trilogy closes out. Tommy gets arrested for killing, a, forming a lynch mob that kills an innocent person. And you're actually not allowed to kill people if you're forming a lynch mob to kill bad guys either. So he gets arrested, but he actually got to stop evil. There, so you get like, there's all sorts of different emotions in the victory, but it ends right there. And maybe in the process to like defeat him, Lori has to sacrifice herself. I don't necessarily want her to die, but you could do that. You close it out. But instead, they went, no, let's do a trilogy. So that makes kills worse because they have to come up with all these excuses why people are dumb and thus they die rather than kill Michael Myers with their many guns. You also have to make Michael Myers so unbelievably indestructible that it makes absolutely no sense. If you start adding up the number of gunshot wounds that Michael takes in Halloween 2018 and kills, it means in one night he was shot, I think, at least eight times. Seven of those, I think, are in the chest area and then his hand getting blown off by a, by a shotgun. Plus, he's stabbed multiple times. Plus, he's hit in the head with a bag of bricks. Plus, he's hit in the head with a baseball bat. Plus, he's hit by a car. I mean, all this stuff happens. And after all of that, he defeats a mob of people. That only happened because they needed to do a sequel. Because they needed to do Halloween Ends. So what is the story that they had to tell in Halloween Ends? Well, they didn't really have a story about Michael Myers. They had the story about this other guy. So we have this other guy who, in our opening sequence, accidentally kills a child he's babysitting. And, and I think they set that up nicely of like legitimately it was fully an accident and not something that you would in any way feel he did something actually wrong. That this really bratty, awful kid locked him in an attic at a point in time where people are nervous. Just one year after a mass murder killed a bunch of people, he's locked up in a creepy attic being taunted and he kicks the door to get out and the stupid kid is standing on the door and gets knocked over. Being a stupid kid that's bratty is not does not make you worthy of a death sentence, but also it's not the guy's fault. It's a legitimate accident. And they proceed to tell a story about that guy... Um, 
being bullied by people, being misunderstood, and you're trying to like maybe he's trying to reacclimate, and then they they have Michael Myers look him in the eyes and either sees the evil in him or passes his evil over something that feels like why is it every time one of these timelines keeps on going you have some supernatural link side to it where people can transfer consciousness shared hallucinations there's always something weird that happens always someone else has to get involved in everything it always has to go in that direction. Every single time it's a bad twist, a bad direction, but they, they add that in one more time. And this guy that's legitimately not a bad dude, now we're turning him into a monster. That's not satisfying. And it's not a real character arc. It's not a real exploration of people being mistreated. It's not really any of those things. It's just Michael Myers looked into his eyes and something happened and he came out of that sewer killer. Like this was the story that had to be told. Well, this is why we couldn't finish off the story with kills. This is why we couldn't still finish off the story, even with 2018. That could have been a conclusion right there. Satisfying conclusion. But instead, we have to tell this story about this guy. And, you know, he's dating Allison, and, they, and there's backs and forth, and people are suspicious of him, and he's slowly turning evil. And then we get to the finale, and he, he kills himself, and then Michael Myers shows up, and then we pick up with this fight with Laurie Strode in the kitchen that should have just been at the end of Kills. And all this stuff with the city and the lynch mob and everything, all these characters that were in Kills, all that stuff could have just put done in at Kills. But no, no, we had to tell this whole other story about this guy that doesn't even survive really into the finale. He dies before the finale. And there's, there's not like an interesting arc there. There's not an exploration of the way society treats uh, people and assumes their guilt. Like there's nothing actually about any of that. You don't, he doesn't, you don't grow and change. There's nothing interesting that happens. You just introduce a character that you feel bad for. And then you turn him into a killer and then he kills a bunch of people. And then you give us this tacked on ending with Michael Myers. Michael Myers suddenly shows up at the end. Michael Myers is just chilling in the sewers. No explanation as to what how, what he's been doing down, down in there, how he's surviving, what he's been doing. No explanation of like, how did he transfer his, his powers to someone else? Like what's going on there? There's like some sort of implication that maybe he gains power from killing people and he hasn't killed many people. Like maybe something like that's going on. And that's why a 60 year old woman is able to defeat him in the finale. Whereas in kills, seven gunshots, bullets to the chest, fingers blown off, hitting the head with bricks, bat. Yeah, no big deal. I can still take out a lynch mob. In this movie, one woman in her 60s is able to defeat him. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I don't know. This the, the whole thing was just so frustrating to me because it didn't need to happen. It's not a story that felt like it explored the mythology, did anything that was like, oh, wow, that was cool and interesting. It just felt like they were spinning their wheels. We have to come up with some excuse to continue the story and do something that's different. So, oh, uh, there's this other guy. It's this other guy. And uh, sometimes he kills people on his own. Sometimes he kills them with Michael. But it's this other guy. Even beyond that, part of the whole concept of Michael Myers, part of the what was kind of a little different that the little what makes Halloween stand out was this whole idea that Michael Myers isn't really a person. He's just evil incarnate. He's the shape. There is no motivation. He's, he's not really stalking people. And of course, they, they kept doing different things with the mythology. And sometimes he's stalking his sister. Sometimes he's not. Some, there's a lot of that different opinions on all of that, depending on which film you see and how many movies you watch into each timeline. But the original concept was just this shape. Stalking girls. There's not a motive in any of it. Just evil. You get to this movie, we'll introduce a new guy that gets evil put into him or whatever happens to him. And it's him getting revenge on all the people that wronged him. High school bullies. Cop trying to steal his girlfriend. Homeless guy threatening him with a knife crazy parents of his and I guess he, and he doesn't like he does he, they to make sure he doesn't kill his dad who was actually very understanding he kills his mom who was very ununderstanding who was not understanding 
And then he goes after Laurie Strode. So he's only killing people that deserved it. Deserved. There's a motive. It's a revenge movie. Contrary to kind of what the whole premise has even kind of been. Even the even when you get into the Michael Myers, Myers stuff, part of what they seem to be doing with 2018 was making it clear. Michael Myers is not obsessed with Laurie Strode. She's obsessed with him. The doctor is obsessed with the two of them. The doctor sets up the scenario where Michael Myers shows up at Laurie Strode's house, but... The movie itself doesn't really establish Michael is specifically targeting her or being interested in her. Nope, here, yeah, he shows up at her house. He's out to get her specifically. So it's just like no consistency in the what these movies are communicating. No, they're like the movie doesn't make it clear what its rules are. Like you have these occasional monologues from Laurie like he's evil and you can't just put evil down. So are you saying that he's Jason Voorhees? He's just zombie Michael Myers that just can't die. He keeps coming back until you just maul him up into hamburger meat. Is that what you're saying? What, what's going on here? Like I don't, I don't get what's happening here. What are you implying? And then you just use this idea like he grabs someone and looks into his eye and he sees the bad that he did, but then it also changes the other guy. Not clear exactly what happened there. But then Michael's like in the sewer. And you, you literally have a scene where. Corey runs up to Michael and he pushes him over. And I was like, uh, oh, I see where the movie's headed. I see what's happening here. This is all in his head, which I don't like that twist either, but it's all in his head. He's not actually interacting with Michael because there's no way that they're actually having Corey push over Michael Myers and going, give me your mask. I want your mask and puts his mask up. There's no way they're actually doing that. No, they did. They actually had Corey push over Michael Myers and steal his mask because Michael is so weak. I, I mean, if we're in reality, Michael, of course, is very weak because he was he should be dead from seven gunshot wounds, being run over by a car, bricks to the head, bats to the head, stab wounds, fingers shot off. But he didn't die from any of that, in which case I don't know what you are communicating. I have no idea what the rules are here. No idea how they work. <sighs> I just don't get it. I get, it feels so much to me like they thought they had something really good with Halloween 2018. They saw this is going to go really well. Let's keep on going. But they didn't actually have a trilogy's worth of ideas. There's not a trilogy worth of ideas here. It's it's like one and a half movies, maybe two movies. And and it doesn't even feel like a cohesive trilogy because what they do in Halloween Kills doesn't set up this movie. If it was supposed to be this cohesive trilogy that's all going along, it was all part of the plan, this would have played out very, very differently with the way that they showed things and what was in, implied. You don't do it the way that, like, even at the end of Kills, they kill off the uh, Karen, the, they kill off the the, the, the daughter. And it, it doesn't really, it didn't need to happen. It doesn't really tie into anything other than to just make it so Allison has moved in with her grandmother. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't. There's no significance. It's just one more thing that happened, one more t shocking twist. And then they go to this movie and what do we do now? We we have to find some way to delay everything. We don't want to just rehash what happened in the last two movies, Michael Myers killing on Halloween. We can't just rehash that. But we want to end the movie with Michael Myers having a showdown with Laurie Strode. So what do we do? We spin our wheels for an hour and 20 minutes with Corey turning evil and killing people using unknown rules, and then we give what people what they actually want. The resolution that kind of already happened in 2018 and that should have happened at the end of Kills, but instead we turned it into a trilogy and compromised Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends in order to, to do that. There were, some th there were some things in here that were kind of nice. Like I seeing Laurie Strode kind of happy, flirting a little bit with the cop. Cool. I'm down with it. It's kind of nice. Um, not killing her off. Maybe that's bold. I don't know. It's, it seems like either way is kind of bold. It's a horror franchise. So you kind of assume you're gonna they're going to kill her off. I just assumed that and then they didn't. I was like, oh, that's kind of nice. Kind of gave her a little bit of a happy ending of 44 years later. Okay, cool. That's, that's a different note than I was expecting. Like I said, there's some kills in there that are that are pretty cool. I didn't mind the Corey character, actually. 
And if he'd been like maybe inter- interwoven in the previous two films, if he'd been set up before, if there's more to it, maybe it would have worked for me. But the, the whole concept of it, of like, we're just going to do this thing to, to stretch out our movie, to pad out our movie before we get to the last 20 minutes, which you actually want. I just felt like such a violation. There's no rules. There's no logic to any of it. It's just stuff happening. And so for me, this is a movie that just I literally, as soon as it became clear, shape grabs him and I was like, oh no, this is where it's going. This is where it's headed. That there's going to be some like team up with the shape and grabs him and looks him in the eyes. And it comes out as like, oh no, this is bad. I am not down for this at all. This is not the direction I want this to go. This does not make sense to me. This is not satisfying. This is not the natural organic resolution from what has been set up in the previous films in this timeline. This is just adding in these stupid ideas again where everything has to turn supernatural eventually. Everything it just has to get weird. Every single time. Every single time time they do this stuff and it kind of goes back to something i said in my spoiler free review that i don't feel like john carpenter's halloween laid the foundation for a long-running franchise it, when you have such a simple concept crazy person escapes on halloween night and starts killing people like th- there's just not a depth of lore to have an like ever expanding set of adventures related to this. So inherently you, you, you start going back to supernatural elements, implausibility, um, plot twist that strain all credibility that weren't set up at all because it's just such a simple movie. That's what's great about it. It's like a very straightforward, simple concept, executed nicely. And now we've got 13 movies in the franchise, 12 of them about Michael Myers. It wasn't set up to carry that kind of weight, which case you can maybe have him come back once. But after that, you just immediately things start getting really, really, really shaky. And once again, that's what happens here. That we have to introduce a new character, new mythology. Like, for some reason, Michael's just chilling in the sewers for four years. Hanging out in the sewers. Still got his mask on in the sewers. And he's just chilling down there. How? Don't know. Why is he still alive? Don't know. But that's what he's doing. That's what he's up to. And... Then all of a sudden, coincidentally, he finds the right guy to whatever happens, just so we can have one more movie. <sighs> I didn't like it. <laughs> and I really, I just as a direction to take things. I, the execution made it a little bit more fun. And, you know, there, there's a couple jokes that land, some kills I liked, a little satisfying moments. Oh, I got a phone call. Like, when you're watching... Lori pin Michael to a table and like finally defeat him. There were elements of that. I was like, once again, like just kill him. Just keep stabbing his throat. Chop his head off. Don't pause to monologue. Cut his head off quick. But you know, at least it allows it to play out that she at least pins him down and they keep trying to do things to kill him and slit his throat and slit his wrist. Like we're going to really make sure he's dead. And then, you know, when you, you get right after that and the town sees they have the body and they're like, this isn't what you're supposed to do. And the sheriff goes, it is tonight. And then the whole town takes his body and throws it in a wood chipper or car crusher or whatever. And you see his body get mulched up. Sure. That's satisfying and fun. Would have been more satisfying pinned on the last movie. Make the less, last movie less stupid, less stretched out it, itself. Make the characters in that one dumb and give this ending on that movie that they mulch him up. The mob mulches him up in that one. And we're good. That movie's better. And we don't have a weird movie about Corey going on dates with Allison and then killing people. <sighs> I'm interested to hear what you have to say about it, though, because um, I'm guessing this one's going to have a strong cult audience. People are going to love it, that it's different, that it's weird, that it goes off in this bonkers direction. 
Some people are gonna love that. I didn't, but maybe you did. Let me know what you thought down below in the comment section. I got an updated ranking coming tomorrow. As you can guess, this movie's gonna be in the top tier, obviously. Let me know what you thought about this one down below in the comment section. Come back tomorrow for that ranking and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye.